write what she says. See? Now. See, in the old days when we were drinking uh, cocktails, we didn't have no problem now. You know, we just go right off the side, you know. Oh, man, I watched this thing on net. What? We actually have nothing to talk about. <laughs> So, How can you say well, such a thing? Gonna, you know, Anybody really, that watches this show knows that. Normally, Wizard, Wiz comes in oh. with a whole laundry yeah, list. list of the, and I look at it, and oh, it's usually great. like half the stuff is politics. Right. And I'm just like, oh. Not like, today. And today, he's like, I got nothing. Okay, you know, <coughs> cool. But by mentioning the list, you reminded me of something that right. I definitely want to get into. And that is stars. You know, we got stars today. And they, and they, and they. They're movie stars. And rock stars. Or, or they're and rock stars, stars. The TV. But I want to get into this. I, I just wanted to mention this, and I don't know where we go from this. This is not a long okay. conversation, but, because I did think of something, but when you said the list, I forgot about that and I remember what this. What is it? The reason today's movie stars are so hideous to listen to and so hard to understand, illustrative point. Robert Downey Jr. as Sherlock Holmes is an absolute disaster. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Not his acting. But you see, Sherlock Holmes is someone that speaks a lot of things. And he says a lot of things. Jeremy Brett, same problem. Speaks a lot of things and he gets quiet. He talks and he digs you and you can't understand. You, don't understand. you know why? You know why? why? Because today's movie stars did not work on the stage. They did not have Letters time on Broadway yeah. or off Broadway. In other words, they, they didn't develop their craft. Too many of our little kids or very young people, and they never spent any time really developing their craft. They were discovered or however they got into the movies. They're in the movies, now they're a big star, la di da di da But they never had the enunciation. They never had the projection because it was always a guy with a mic. Okay, and the guy that's getting sound, he's getting sound. He may not understand a thing they say, but he's getting sound. His levels are right. And but then they now in, in modern times they can go back in and do playback and record over and yeah, but they do, lip sync. But they don't. I mean, I watch this. I watch this. This what could have been a great Sherlock Holmes. Well, great's a strong word. I mean, believe me, the, the old people that did these films had stage experience. They could whisper, and you could understand every single word they said. They could speak in a way that they enunciated every word and every syllable so that even when they talked quietly, you knew exactly what they said because they were projecting the words. They weren't over here talking into a microphone trying to be, you know what I mean? And that's, so we have a whole era of people that work in movies now that have not worked on the stage. And if you go back and you look at the ones that you watch in the movies that are really good and they're consistently good, you find they're the ones that go out and do summer stock, they go out and they work live on the stage so they understand that even when you talk quietly, you have to be able to project because projection is mental. I was very impressed. I was on YouTube mm -hmm. and saw, um, this was right after the Tony Awards came out, and uh, Daniel Radcliffe, who played Harry Potter, okay. is now in the Broadway remake of How to Succeed in Business. Right as the lead character. Oh, the guy? And they performed a very challenging song, The Brotherhood of Men. Right, right. And um, if you get a chance to YouTube it, they did it on the Tony Awards. Um, phenomenal. Okay. He was phenomenal. Okay. I didn't expect him to be as good as he was. And you could understand everything he said? And you could said. understand See. everything he said. I mean, it was a song. But still. And it, you know, but he was singing and he was dancing. Right. And he didn't miss a beat. He wasn't off key. Right. It was phenomenal. I, I was like, I want to go to Broadway and watch this now. Well, Because it, it was not what you had expected. You know, it's like, I, I, have a, I have, there's a place where I work. And we, we have a, we have a, in one of the areas that we work, we have a, a plaza. 
and when I'm over here, over here on this side, there's a there's a little uh, little booth, and th there's a booth that has a microphone, and Those has a person that talks then the microphone and talks to the people in the plaza. Here's the problem. First of all, most of those people, English is not their first language. Okay, but can I just finish, finish what I was trying thing. to say? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, finish. I can stand here and cover that plaza by myself. Without, without the, the mic. Yeah. The, with the microphone, you can't even hear. Because, they, because A, nobody has taught them how to properly use the microphone. Okay, because there is a way they can get much better volume right. out of it. Than <laughs> right, right, that doesn't work. And, and also... You know, and all, now and also technically, they should be in more speakers than where they are too. But I'm just saying. So I mean, and that's another thing. But yo, now, ooh, you made a good point. That's definitely a part of it, because with some people, English is not a first language. Right. And that. It's <coughs> I. Uh, I mean. Go. I when I go out to eat and you have to put your name in, if the person who's taking my name, because I always have to spell it. Um, if English is not their first language, I give them a different name. Good for you. Because <laughs> Smith. Yeah, because they. I don't know how I could. I will say it is D as in dog, right. Y as in yellow, right. and then you look at the spelling and they put like a P and a Q in there. I'm yeah, like, right, right, I didn't right. even say right. that. Like, right. where did you get that from? Right. You know, and so I'll be like, Smith. Yeah, it's easier. Natalie Smith. Natalie Smith. It's just easier. Then you go in and say, you know, and you get your table. One time I, I used my, um, I don't know, I guess you can call him my boyfriend, my boyfriend's last name. Okay. Because it was easier to enunciate. Okay. And uh, and then, then the lady goes, well, what's your name? I'm like, Natalie. Because right. she asked me what I, my name was. Right. And then they, the ticket, and they left the ticket at the table, and my boyfriend comes and sits down. He's like, why did you give my last name and your first name? And I'm like... Don't read into that. Don't read into that. Don't read into it. Here. Yeah. Marry me. Yeah, no. Like, that, as soon as I had to go through the whole thing, I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, let me explain to you what happens when I try and spell right. my last name. And right. I could, like, hold it up on a big sign and say, look. Right. And right. they'd right. still misspell it. I right. said, yours is just, you didn't have any letters that they could screw up. Right. It was just easier. Yeah. Because apparently B, V, E, right. Q, That's P, right. Right. and R all sound the same. I feel, I sense a little hostility, Angel. It's very frustrating. Uh, okay, I bet you it is. I'm sure it is. <clears throat> oh, so, <clears throat> so, so, so just to tie that off, I think that these people that, that want to be stars, that want to be more than just stars, okay? A lot of them are going back to Broadway and stuff. Well, they, they, need to, they need to get out and, and learn how to enunciate. They need mm -hmm. to learn to how to develop diction. Because just because they can mumble some words, you know, they're not Hunter Thompson. So you know about, I mean? It's not even, like, public speaking. Yeah. When was the last time, and not being on a talk show, that they stood up and just talked to a crowd of people? If you ask, and talk and understand. Do you know what the biggest problem, I have somebody, I have, Victor, don't watch this part. I have a, I love Victor, okay? And I found out the other day what the problem was. I didn't realize what. Victor is a, is a wonderful guy that we work with. And he has a bit of an accent, you know, that stayed with him for the past 30 years. Not just years. big. It's okay. ginormous. And it's hard. I love you, Victor. You know, he's the best. But it's a little bit hard to... Oh, if Paul, and Paul, if you're watching this, I told Natalie about, I mean, Angel, about the, uh, the, the pregnancy show. So we like that you're watching the show. But anyway, so back to Victor. It's hard to understand Victor when you're standing face to face with him. Right. So and then we have these radios. Right. That you know the radios, and, and so they, like yeah. everything comes across crystal clear on that one. So it's even harder to understand him. Right. And it's and it's and it doesn't come across crystal clear. It's a radio, and it comes across like it's on a radio. And I realized <laughs> what the solution was. So I saw him the other day, and I said, Victor, you know what the solution to your problem is? Speak slower and end your words. You know how we all talk. We talk. We run words into right. words. Well, he was trying to get across to me, and he was, and you know, this is a this is a, a beautiful guy. Mm -hmm. Who he oh, loves love America. He's fantastic. He, he's nice to the people that he works. You couldn't have a better guy to work with. He's brilliant. And I just feel so, and I feel, and, but it's tough when I'm trying to talk to my cameras. So. By the end of the conversation, he was speaking to me like this, and I understood everything he said. 
So I said, now, I don't know if he paid any attention to me, but when I went back and I saw him, I said, Victor, please, if you just speak a little slower and end your words, people will have no trouble with what you say. And, 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 and that's, that's, that's the kind of problem with these people. Then They're acting. I like to do grammatical checks in my head okay. when I listen to songs on the radio. Okay, like? Um, there's one song... Because singing is not the same as talking. Right, but it'll be like... So there's a song that talks about, you know, lay, let me lay you down next to me. Oh, great. You know, it's like, no. You, you lie down. A lie human down. being lies down. I lay this cup down on the table. Right. Well, that's what he means. He wants to lay them down. It's well. It's whatever it was. <clears throat> right. It's wrong. Or there, you know, this, you know, you listen to the. I, I just like to listen to the. Well, the songs but and music. Like, you could, you could change. Well, but and that that's that happened. rhyming doesn't make <clears throat> sense. Let me tell you, as a songwriter, you become very sensitive to the word. That's how I really learned words. And you know how I really learned words, with, the with Tank. Mm -hmm. when I wrote a couple of songs with her. I mean, I wrote the songs, and, and, and she's a real wordsmith. She was going to be a lawyer. And she would, point, she would say, well, how about this word instead? And that's when I really started to pay attention to it. Now, I had always been attentive to the words, but that's what really gave me the insight to, to real, because words, uh, they used this in Da Vinci Code, too. You know, words, a picture's worth a thousand words, but what, do the, what does the picture mean? Or symbols, the same mm -hmm. thing. Well, words are the same way. That's why the other, the other last week we were talking about it, how important words are. Yeah. Uh, now, in songs, they, they, they get corrupted because that's a, like, a, uh, songs are romantic verse. Songs are poems put yes. to music. Okay, very good. That's a good one. And poems aren't always have the right grammar when you look at when you look at poems, they they don't have the same sentence breaks or whatever. Right. And people stylize the poem so you don't always have capital letters and punctuation. Right. But grammatically, you don't you know you put your nouns and your pronouns you know like. Yeah, they should still follow the same. They order. still follow us. Yeah. They, they, there's a prescription to speaking and writing and read you know and right. that's and po even poetry still follows that. Right. To some extent. Sure. You know they're not gonna. Confuse words that don't need to be confused. Here I am, am I running? Okay. Something like yeah, that. No, no, I'm, but I know, yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. You kind of kind of have words because we expect to hear, <clears throat> you know, yeah. words. If you want way. people to listen to your song, right. it has to make sense to us. Oh, oh, let me, this is just a footnote. I've, I always think about this, and I've always wanted to draw a little cartoon to highlight it. But, you know, but let me just, I'll just use this time today because it's kind of a free for all. You're, let's say you're s single lingual. You're not bilingual, you're single lingual. Sing okay. Okay, you have, you, you, I'm lucky to know English. Right. Okay, I mean, I mean, I was, I'm happy I got that far. Right. Okay. But you're over here and you're someplace. And I've always thought about this because we have a tendency to throw our imagination at things. So he is sitting in a restaurant, he is someplace. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the food store, wherever it is, imagine. So you're here and you're standing there and, and you only know your one language. And these people that are next to you, they're speaking in a foreign language. And your imagination, either either it's imagines that they're saying something about you that they don't want you to know, or they're speaking about some incredibly sexy moment that they, they want to keep quiet, and, but they know they're done, they're going back right. and forth. And I always thought to them, in fact, is if you could really blow their bubble up, they're probably talking about the washing machine or something very, un, you know, unimportant. But they're more comfortable in that language. They're not necessarily doing it because, you I know. think that about my cats sometimes. <clears throat> you mean? Like, I watch them. I wa I, yeah, I spend a lot of time watching my cats because I don't have a lot else going on. But, like, I, you know, Lucy, who is, like, probably the smartest and dumbest cat in the household okay. at the same time. But, you know, she just she does weird things, and I just want to, you know, I want that bubble going, what the hell is she thinking? Right, right, You know, right. like, what is she thinking when she decides to jump from a mattress to, like, you know, like, she do, you know, like, you know you can't make it. <laughs> Why did Why you try? Why did you try? Oh, 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 in the potpourri segment of the sick. Oh, I don't want to lose that. What was that? Well, oh, 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 oh. This goes back. This goes back to something we were talking okay. about a couple weeks ago. This, we have a tendency to input our our to put things on, like 
when a child is crying, and because this is like what you were talking about before, the, the kid gets loud, and the mom gets louder, and the back and forth, and yeah. it escalates out of control. And sometimes that happens because, and whether it's with a pet, or with a person, or especially with kids and animals and things like that, we have a tendency to think what they're thinking. Right. That, they're, that they're, they're, they're really doing this for a malicious reason, you know, and that's, excuse me, invariably not the reason, right. not but the case at all. That. We don't know that. And with a little kid, you know, and let's, let, let's say the kid is, is, is uh, let's say, is, is filling his diaper one way or the other, right. okay? And, and it's happening it's over and over again. And after a while, the parents start to think, he's doing this on purpose. You know, I was having fun. I was happy over here. Casey Anthony. Right, like the child can control their poop. Right, okay. But I mean, but you can see how something like that could escalate. And that's why I think, and this, that there was a, there's this horrible story on uh, uh, Casey Anthony down in Florida. And uh, her child died, and we, nobody knows what's going on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody thinks that she did it. Or, but at the same, now, you got to keep in mind <clears throat> that I don't know what the facts are, but I do know that she's just a little girl, too. Okay? Nobody sees her as a little girl. They see her as an irresponsible mom. She should let have me, but Let she, me throw this out. Because I, oh. I watch segments of the trial. Okay. Um, if, I, if I was completely innocent right. and being falsely accused of this, and right. I would cry, like, if I was, there was not a single tear that fell out of that woman's eye. Well, I mean, I, I don't I, know. And she pretended, she pretended to cry. You look at that tape. She pretends to cry. And if it was me, I'd be going through boxes of tissue every day. Right. She'd have one in her hand for the entire trial. Like, really. <clears throat> well, there's something, there was something not right there. And I think that um, the jury, because she was um, found ever, not guilty. Did they ever prove that it wasn't the father or the brother that was the father? I would not be so bad. Um, There's all kinds that, of no. Something that was false accusations. That was the lawyer because the the lawyer. They did suggest trial, that. The lawyer suggested Casey's lawyer suggested that there was um, abuse or yes, like abuse. Her dad, but um, but did either one of them suggest that he might have been the father? No, no, because he got in trouble for suggesting that there was abuse. Okay, well, I'm because just... Because it was still, false, because it was false. Yeah, but there's still... There's, so there's still a little I gray area think, there, and I don't yeah, want to brand them that. I just there's a, here, here was the big thing, is that <clears throat> it was a highly media-based trial. Right. The um, jury only saw about half of what was... We saw. We saw. So we had a lot more judgment to give. Right. Um, and based on their... You could not prove without any doubt right. that she did it. Right. So there was an, enough, there wasn't, like they said, there wasn't enough evidence. They right. looked at it and they right. were like, There was enough you know, reasonable doubt for yeah. her to escape. Yeah, but, <coughs> but I think that if they had seen right. everything, right. they would have done a guilty conviction. Well, the point that I wanted to make. Sorry. On, on, no, 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 I'm glad. No, 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 Just no, someone right. told me I looked like her. Really? Yeah, at no, work. I'm, I don't know why. I don't think so. I don't know. He goes, this guy comes up to me and goes, do you, uh, do you know who Casey Anthony is? This is in the middle right. of the trial. And I'm right. like, yes, sir, I do. Yeah. He's like, are you related to her? And I was like, thanks a lot. No, sir. And I'm quite insulted by your comments. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> I didn't, and I wouldn't, and I wouldn't help him. He had asked me to, you know, and I was like, mm, you have to go farther down and talk to somebody else. I will not partake. I oh. refused to help him. Oh, you I was are so insulted. You are. You. You. Because then he, yeah, she's oh, frightening. Was, she. She seems so nice. Doesn't I was she? very insulted. Uh, anyway, the point that I wanted to make, which I don't even know if I remember it anymore, okay. <clears throat> was that she. Who knows? In other words, in other words, in other words, this this might have been. She. You know. She's. She's. She. No matter what else, she is still a young person. She's not old. I don't know how old she is. She's in her twenties, I think. She's still young, and she did get pregnant by somebody. We don't know who. That, to me, is amazing. She knows who, okay? Or she knows the range of who, if she doesn't know who. Um, and who knows? I mean, that's the point that I was trying to make. Maybe she was in the middle of doing something, and she was having a little bit of time for herself, and she was having, and the baby acted in a certain way, and she reacted the wrong way. You know, and yeah, she, she reacted the wrong well, way. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, because that's how these things happen sometimes. They're, and I mean, you know, they're not always malicious. Sometimes Did you know they're stupid. That Zanny, the nanny, the word Zanny right. is the street name for Xanax. 
Okay, now tell me how this plays in. She was saying that Zanny the nanny, she had Zanny the nanny watching her child. Oh, you mean she'd been giving her drugs, and one time she gave him too much. Gave that could be. Gave her drugs, knocked her out, and <coughs> she put the girl in the trunk so she can go out and party. Right. And one time. And one time. What I think, what I think happened is one time she gave a little too much. Um, trunk in Florida. That's it's hot. That, that kills it's you. It's hot. It'll that kill. Is so I think that. Oh, that and then is they, really Then horrible. she realized, uh oh. So then, <coughs> she, then she was like, crap. What am I going to do? Me. Put her in the playhouse. But then realized, oh, I can't leave her in the playhouse because somebody's going right. to find her and not know. So then put her back in the trunk and then buried her. That is horrible. That's what I think happened. Well, then I can only hope that she gave the little the little girl. Oh, see, I didn't know that's anything. Then, and then, then, then she Freudian slipped out, and that's what she's been doing. She's been drugging the kid to go out and play, and one time she overdrugged him. Well, let's hope that if she did overdrug her, that that's how she died. She didn't burn up in the trunk of the car. No, she was she suffocated. Oh, that's she hideous. That's horrible. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's I mean, what I think. That's how I got in trouble with Dr. Fontana because he wanted to stop abuse, and I was saying string him up. You know what I mean? But the point that he was making is that very often. It's people that have been abused that abuse. And you have to break that cycle. And yeah. it's hard. It's not because we all Yeah, that have, whole family is something not right. Yeah. We, we, have, we talk about skill sets and stuff like that. You, oh, you made a good point off of last week's show, and I wanted to just highlight it again. There is a wealth of information out there, okay? Oh, and I'm not talking about... about yeah, you're talking about... Go, yeah. And, and I'm not talking about trying to find out about chloroform... To help no, you with your energy. children. Right, that's wrong. Okay, but the, uh, l let's just tag into that a little bit. A little bit more on that. You were talking about. You were trying to suggest, or did you actually suggest to these I folks? I bought the books. You bought the books. I bought the books for them. Okay, and now I what, said, what, what? What were we talking about? We were talking we were about. Ta we were talking about teenage boys and raising teenage boys and okay. teenagers, but specifically boys and their emotional problems and stuff. And okay. uh, there's a family that I'm good friends with. The dad who's okay. got problems with the stepson. Okay. Stepson comes to my house and um, helps out with some jobs that I need okay. done. Excuse me, such as like um, restaining a dresser and things like okay. that. Okay. So um, you went online. I went online and I went to Amazon.com and uh, searched for teenage parenting books about teenage boys. Okay. And there's you know a bunch of them. there's you know probably hundreds of thousands of them. Right. But they pick the best ones that pop up first. And you right. look at the star rating. You look at customer reviews. Right. And uh, the honest, the truth is, a lot of parenting books would also have a religious undertone. Okay. So you have to be careful of, about that if sure. that's not what you believe. Right, 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 right. But aside <coughs> from me. the religious undertone, there are even in, in there are good references and resources and suggestions and right. strategies on how to interact right. with your child. So, um, so I went and I just bought the books. I got, you know, they're cheap. They're cheap. They were used, used, but in great condition. Sure, sure, sure. And you can, and that's the brilliant thing about Amazon.com. Oh, they offer that? I didn't realize that they use pre-read, pre-read yeah. oh, books. Oh, yeah. You, they, they were cheap. Uh, Florida. They were cheap. I was in Florida. They have yeah. pre-owned homes. They don't have, they have pre-owned cars. They don't have used cars. They have been previously owned cars. Let me tell you something. They used cars, but they don't call them that. No, Everything in Florida is pre used. something. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just a. Uh... Oh, so I anyway. I will tell you that I looked up. I was, I'm in the market for a car, and I was going on some websites, and they have that Carfax report. Right. And so you click on it, and it pulls up. That thing is really cool. It tells you. Yeah. Who the owner was? Right. Not doesn't give a name, but right, like right, right. where, what state it was in. Right. Every time it went in for service, every right. time anything like oh, that's cool. It's, I, I well, that was tells like, you a good history of the, of the yeah, car. Yeah, right. like, and then they, you know, and it and it says like went in for service. Documented color is blue, you oh, know, and then hey, like cool. so you if look you're, farther. It's white with you. Right? Yeah, you're like there's something not right here. Okay, but, no, but that that's cool. Yeah. Well, and, and I wanted to say the footnote in this parenting thing is this: you should be uh, you should be reading ahead. What does that mean? That means if you're planning if you have a, six, a pregnancy, well, if you have a 16-year-old and you've been having problems with them for five years, right? That's you're too you know, late you're, with your book. Yeah, you can get a book and it might help you deal with some things, but 
you know, the 13 year old, this is the time to get it. Right, and, as, and, that's, so. and that's why I'm saying if you're planning a pregnancy, you're not just having a child, but you're planning a pregnancy, now is when you should be reading about mm -hmm. the kind of things that will help you raise the child. Because yeah. we've spoken how many times that kids don't come with a manual. But you need a manual. And, and you'll, your life and their life will be better if you take that time. And then you should be reading those teenage books when he's eight and nine and ten so that you're ready for that stuff when it comes up. Because there's got to be a, a way to have... I mean, listen, I loved my folks the whole time. But you got to realize, what, <clears throat> by 18, I was out of the house living in New York City. And let me, uh, let me tell you something else, too, is... Um, and this is... I always... My parents did this, and this... This is hard to sound not, you know, cruel, but church isn't always the answer. Okay. And I think a lot of people look at, oh, I'm having problems. Let's just go to church, go to church, go to church. No, no, that's not. And that's not an answer either. That's um, not even dealing with the problem sometimes. Right. But I think some parents use that as an escape because I can't tell you. I've got students that go to church two to three, sometimes four times a week. Holy smoke. And then they come in and you hear them, the stuff that they say. And, right. they, you know, and I just look <clears> at them and I'm like, it, and you go to church how many times? Right, it's just the body that yeah, goes to church, you know, not the spirit. You know, it's they're fulfilling something, and you know, and, and then the parents, the parents are like, "Oh, he goes to church. We go to church four times a week, and he's a good Christian child." And I'm like, "What right. are you smoking?" Now, see, and that, and that brings us to that brings us to a, a little plug for another show that we have. Uh, I have some shows up here on YouTube. Angel and the Wiz, no spaces. Angel and the Wiz, no spaces. Um, Revelation shows. And that points out one of the problems with religion. That is to say that religion that we practice now, we were trained in, and it was based on things that happened years and years and years and years ago. It's time to move to today and be a part based of today. On, it's, let okay. me tell you, a lot because, of faith yeah. is based on paganism. Well, no, but I'm just trying to say they use words then that don't, aren't yeah, as effective you now. You can't just go in. Well, and, and one of the That's illustrations. That's why homosexuality is not mentioned in the Bible because that word wasn't around then. Well, and, and, the, and the point that I use as, as an illustration to how much I. Oh, wow, I got to go. Uh, it's just well, go see the Revelation show. See Revelation 3. It talks to you about the Lord's Prayer and it shows how it was completely misunderstood. The Lord's Prayer. He, they asked him how to pray. He showed them how to pray. He didn't say, repeat these words over and over. Mm -hmm. He was trying to show them to use your own words. Okay, and on this happy note... Do something good every day. Yes, right. Go volunteer and, at an animal shelter. Yeah, at least, or do something, but, you know, make the world a little bit better place to be in because then it will be a better place. Does that follow? Yes.